I'll open the hearing on May 24th hearing of the Hampton Beach Area Commission and ask Commissioner Preston to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, and welcome. I see some familiar faces out there, some faces that I saw the other night. Um, so before I open the um, public comment, I'd just like to explain to you explain to you where we are, how we got here, and what our, <clears throat> what our plan is to go forward, so that you can speak to that. If you have written comments, you can just hand them in, because we are collecting them, and we will keep them. You don't need to read the whole page. We can read that. So <clears throat> the plan that you see up here in front of you and, and that you saw at the public hearing the other night, I want to tell you what that is. It's not DOT's plan. And it is not VHB's plan. It is HBAC's plan. And that is the result of public hearings in the past and discussions on this board. This is the first time that we have been able to see it all completely laid out because they have worked in pieces, in segments. And sometimes when you work in segments, things don't always look good until the next segment. So this is the first time that we have laid it out. We heard some of the discussion um, the other night at the public hearing. I am asking, as you, if you look at the agenda tonight, you will see that I am asking the commissioners to identify five things that they heard at the public hearing that resonated with them. And we will go from that point. We will not be taking any votes tonight at all. We'll hear the discussion. We'll hear if the commissioners have any suggestions that they think we ought to be rethought because we are updating mm -hmm. the master plan. We are not laying out the traffic. We are updating the master plan, which will direct, help direct the flow of traffic, the parking, and uh, public safety. So I, I think you need to understand that. You're not, when, when we finish, you will hear words and language that go in the master plan that will also go before the, the Hampton Planning Board for approval, uh, you will not see anything <coughs> laid out. All of that will start when they, when they look at the reconstruction of, of the street. So with that said, uh, I will open the public uh, comment period. So is there someone that would like to speak? Mary Louise? <coughs> Um, I guess up there, if, okay. you, if you would. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Mary Louise Wolsey, 148 Little River Road in Hampton. Um, I attended the hearing at Marston <coughs> that you had on the plan. I found it very, very disappointing. I have three points that I'd like to bring up. The parking spaces are here. I think are an eyesore and a terrible disservice to this beach. The town of Hampton has been used uh, for years as a cash cow for the state and I object to that um, parking all along the beautiful ocean front. Number two, we have the number one red listed bridge in the state. What a wonderful designation. If that bridge is the number one red listed bridge in the state, somebody had better look at getting it replaced as soon as possible. If you want to help with the traffic jams down at the beach, you need a brand <coughs> new bridge that's not gonna fall into the river with four lanes, two south and two north. We are now in trouble trying to respond to Sun Valley, which is our property across the river and also for mutual aid in Seabrook. And the last comment that I will make is Ashworth Avenue, and I was pretty appalled when I saw that presentation at Marston. The state doesn't own Ashworth Avenue. 
How dare you have a plan for Ashworth Avenue and two-way traffic in the little trees? I talked to the town manager this afternoon at 2 o'clock. The state doesn't own that property. Why is that being included in the plan? And Ashworth Avenue is critical for police and fire response. That cannot be two-way. I am very, very unimpressed with what I've seen. If, if people have been working hard on this, they have wasted their time. And we need to see something that will be more appropriate for Hampton Beach instead of trying to cram in your, your juggernauts and turnarounds and the messes that are down there. And it's about time that the state of New Hampshire took care of the drainage on North Beach and the sidewalks, the town, the state has been very lax, very lax doing repairs at Hampton Beach. I think the beach deserves much better than we see in this plan. Thank you. Anyone else? If, if you have something written, then you can you can hand it in and just kind of summarize it. Scratched up and it is short. Okay. <laughs> Um, I just have a couple of comments. I, I thought it was wonderful to see the widespread turnout from voters and property owners. And I hope your takeaway was the same as mine. It was clear that residents do not want the transportation plan to do three things. It's, number one was destroy the positive character of Hampton's beauty by putting parking lots where there are now scenic views. Number two, cutting off access to turnaround areas that allow entrance and exits to and from North Beach when South Beach is at a standstill during the summer traffic. And three, paving over more of Hampton Beach for bigger and bigger sidewalks and more parking lots. To the last point, I have a question. At a time when residents making any changes to their property are required to reduce their sealed surface and make changes to mitigate drainage issues. How is this plan not required to meet that standard? How can more paving be done and more drainage problems be created by more and more parking? In summary, I think if the Hampton Beach Area Commission listens to the voters, fixes what is broken instead of reinventing the wheel, and focuses on the stated goal of the grant, which is safety as a central theme. This is less ambitious, but a more desirable approach, and it should be less expensive. It should allow improvement of Hampton roads, sidewalks, crosswalks, and drainage to the benefit of all area residents, including north of Boar's Head. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. It was Lynn Larson. And Lynn, what is your address? Oh, sorry, 553 Ocean Boulevard. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Hello. I'm Angel Garin. Um, it's a microphone. I know. So I, well, I just want to point it to Okay. Um, okay, so I own one Ocean Boulevard. I also one, own one Ocean A Boulevard, and I own one Ocean B Boulevard. So the entrance here, I own all the properties around it. So that's me. Um, I appreciate what everybody is trying to do, but my big concern that I'm worried about is, well, number one, the traffic right there. It's already crazy right there. Um, I'll have customers that are trying to get on a 130 whale watch, say. They're, you know what Catalano's Market was? They're rebuilding it on the Seabrook side. They're in traffic from there for an hour to the state park, and then it's wide open right after that. So that's, that's crazy. If we're going to add another place to turn right there, it's, it's going to make it worse. Um, se secondly, is I'm pretty sure I, I'm even thinking of my husband with his boat behind his truck. I don't think it can make a turn. It'll be all, can you imagine a truck coming this way with a boat and all the lanes and all the people and nobody knowing where they're going anyway? That's going to be a disaster, right here, right here. Um, up here where you're closed off, I've, I've been at that property my whole life. It was my family's property. 
I still don't know which entrance to go when I'm coming from, like, from, from the north. You know, when you go to pull down, I still don't, I guess every time, oh, I'll go this, on this side of the, the median. I'll go on the other side of the median. So maybe figure that one out uh, there. But um, as far as adding anything else near that bridge, that'll be bad. Can you just yeah. give your name? Yes, Angel Garin. Spell the last name. G-A-U-R-O-N. It's all over the signs right when you go over the bridge. If you were there, you'd see that. <laughs> um, and um, no, I appreciate any improvements. And Nancy's helped me in the past with the fuel truck getting in the harbor with the PDA. Um, I just know for a fact, you try to get a boat and a trailer in there, you're going to have traffic backed up all the way to, you might as well say Newburyport, trying to get into Hampton Beach. So, okay, thank you very that's much. That's my piece. Thank you so much. <laughs> Anyone else? Yeah. Oh. Ode Pinio, 15 Tuttle. I have a business on One Ocean Boulevard. I've been down there 29 years. It is getting worse and worse every year. I can stand on the grill, cook, and watch the traffic stopped. They're all trying to get into State Park. They need a separate lane just to get the traffic into there so the rest of the traffic can move. The new proposed uh, entrance into the harbor, we have 40,000 gallon water trucks coming daily down to the beach to pick up salt water. They will not be able to make that S-turn to get in the harbor. Second, you have, on a weekend, you have truck, uh, truck to trailers, yeah, pickup trucks with boat trailers and boats on it. They are lined up. Besides that, you have people who want to go fishing on the party boats. Right now, the way they're doing the procedure is you have to show a ticket, a fishing ticket, in order to buy a parking spot. If you come in, you would have to make U-turns to get down to buy a ticket, and you make another U-turn to go up back in line to so you can park your car. Stupid. If you want to improve something down there, the one thing I like is the entrance where Angel said the first, en a first entrance by the ocean walk, block that off. That would eliminate another a big problem right there. And the other thing is the condos on Harbor Road put a couple more bigger sp stop signs there so they learn how to stop. Because that somebody's going to get killed at that intersection. When they come up that hill, they don't stop. They just keep going. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'll just read a little bit and I'll hand this in. Okay, thank you. I appreciate yeah, that. In interest of time here. So my name is Gary Minx. I live at 709 Ocean Boulevard, and we also own a condo at uh, 83 Ocean Boulevard. Uh, so I, ex <coughs> I accept that the South Beach area is important and that much of the grant will go there. However, the North Beach area uh, from Boar's Head to High Street is still part of the State Beach system and should not be ignored. I'm only looking for basic safety and functions for residents and uh, visitors. Access to the beach is difficult, especially from Boar's Head to Winnicunit. Crossing Ocean Boulevard and stepping up onto the sidewalk is treacherous. My wife has fallen trying to navigate that steep incline to the sidewalk. There are no reason we need to have two lanes um, in both directions on Ocean Boulevard at that area. One lane of traffic will minimize racing, which is a constant problem, and also provide space for much needed bike path. And I'll just Thank you very much. Thanks, Gary. Anyone else? <clears throat> Thank you, Regina Barnes, 95 Presidential Circle. Um, I've been at both of these meetings, and I've also talked to people, and I think what I've picked up that people don't like about the plan in total the most is the issue down by the bridge and over by Harbor Road. Um, the middle between there and up to Church Street, I haven't heard anything negative on any of that. I know there's been problem. they don't like the jug handle. <clears throat> and then I think the biggest thing, I live down in that area, and a lot of people I see are from that area, is the North Beach sort of being neglected out of this portion of the plan for whatever reason. I mean, I understand it's for the master plan, 
but if there wasn't so such significant issue north of Boar's Head, like the drainage, the sidewalks, the real bad storms we've had this winter, I mean, it's still a mess down there. So I think that's really the biggest thing. It seems like for the $8 million, there's not enough progress being made, or people aren't seeing enough progress, even though maybe it's not explained to them. I'm not sure. And the other thing, as far as the speeding on Boar's Head, you know, right when you come around Boar's Head, I totally understand what that's all about. That's been happening for as long as I remember. But perhaps maybe putting up signs. I mean, I don't know if legally how low we can make the speed limit over there, but I know they have those cameras that will tag you if you're speeding. You don't need to have any police enforcement or anything. And I think that would probably cut down probably 90% if people knew that that was there. They would be forced to slow down, whether they were in a truck, a uh, muscle car, or a motorcycle. And I think it would probably help a lot. And it could probably help some revenue side on the, uh, for the state. So I just thought of that, and I just thought I'd throw it out there for you. So thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Timothy Citizen Jones, 16 Dustin Avenue. Um, I wanted to make a few points, uh, one of which you already made or began to make, Nancy, and that is the uh, master plan uh, will be changed and only changed by the elected planning board, correct? It will be changed. The master plan will be changed by us. It will be changed by us, and it will go forth to the planning board for approval. Is that correct? So unless they approve it, it doesn't actually get changed, right? Uh, well, I don't know. Uh, I can't speak to the planning board. I know what the no. rules are. Rick, I can't. You know? Fran knows. Fran? We would have the opportunity to change it. I don't know. Well, we don't know what the plan's going to look like, so I, I don't know what's going to happen. So. Mm -hmm. We will re we will look at it in the same kind of detail and that... The RSA requires uh, the board approval. Uh, yeah. The change to the plan. Right, so the change doesn't exist until the planning board approves it. It's my understanding of the RSI. Correct. Right, and it's my understanding that your, that this body, uh, all members appointed, um, are created by the state legislature to advise the various entities on putting the master plan into effect. It was adopted, what, 2001, something like that? It was 2001. Yeah. yeah. So you're chartered with by the state legislature to provide advice. Right now we're chartered to update the master plan. And, and the update of the master plan actually occurs by the planning board, the elected mm -hmm. planning board, mm -hmm. not the appointed Hampton Beach Area Commission. I wanted to make sure that, because the newspaper is reporting something different, <coughs> and I think it's very important that we get clarification on it. Citizens have their voice at the planning board through their elected representatives on that board. The planning board should not be pushed aside on this matter. I am opposed to any change to the configuration, particularly on Ashworth Avenue. I believe that we have no substantial need for any substantial change on Ocean Boulevard. I do believe that your consideration for recommendations to the planning board for changes to the master plan should reflect from the border to border, especially Ocean Boulevard. That is to say, the town of Northampton's bullet border, at least, to the Seabrook border, and the proposed advice that you would give to making changes to the master plan. And certainly, in terms of the immediate work that needs to occur, we need to take care of the sidewalks. And again, border to border. Obviously, right now, you're talking about something less than that. But the plan should consider border to border, at least. This is the Hampton Beach Area Commission. Mm -hmm. But in terms of immediate need, I think that we really need to consider from uh, the uh, south section of Ashworth and Ocean Boulevard to High Street in terms of the needs for sidewalks, drainage, and repavement. No, re, no substantial reconfiguration is needed whatsoever. I believe that the uh, proposed change to the Hampton Harbor 
entrance is uh, going to cause more problems than it solves. I don't think it's going to solve any problems, to be honest with you. I use the Hampton Road, uh, Hampton Harbor Road entrance all the time. And I have virtually no, well, I have no problem, not, not just virtually no problem, I have no problem using it whatsoever. Sometimes there is a close situation that occurs, but guess what? There, I've never been on a road in America where a close situation hasn't occurred from time to time. People need to drive responsibly. But that, that current situation is just fine. As Uda said, if you want to do anything there, that first entrance, that north entrance into Ocean Walk could be closed to potentially reduce, although it might produce some con additional congestion. I think it, a nominal change that probably wouldn't cause much of a problem. There was a lady that spoke about permeable surfaces and, and why we should be sensitive to it for conservation reasons in terms of dealing with uh, water flow by having sealed surfaces everywhere. And that we are, in fact, as citizens, uh, restricted uh, to certain controls on permeable surfaces. But it's important for the citizens to realize that when government makes laws, including the permeable surface law, they exempt themselves. And there's one other thing about all this configuration change I want you to take into consideration. The tourists come here year after year after year. I mean, pretty much the same tourists. We get new tourists, sure. But we have a whole lot of tourists that come here for decades. And you know, they like the beach the way it is. That's why they come. <laughs> if, if you reconfigure substantially their, their driving patterns, they're going to feel uncomfortable. It's not going to feel like home to them anymore. And they're going to start thinking about going somewhere else. And I'm not sure that we want them to do that. So that's about all I have to say. I thank you for your time. Thank you. <sighs> I stand behind everything I said the last time we had this meeting, and I'm not going to repeat it, OK? So got don't it. worry about that. We've got it in writing. Yes. Um, I want to mention, name and I'm sorry, Stephen LeBranch, 469 Ocean Boulevard. I just want to mention a couple of things that um, weren't talked about the last time. And it's it, interesting that I agree with everything that uh, the citizen just said. Citizen Jones, I agree, happen to agree with everything he just said. Um, but one thing that hasn't been talked about, I brought this up when, when uh, Chris Sununu was at the uh, at the pavilion, and that is that you have a, uh, the DOT should be very aware that they have a road, um, they, have a, they have a wall problem. It's not so much um, the traffic thing. I told you before, I don't believe there is a traffic problem, but there is a problem with that wall. And I, um, I remember talking to the uh, town manager about a year ago, and I said, you know, at some point, uh, Fred, they're going to have to add another couple of feet to that wall and that was done about I'm gonna say about 17 years ago perhaps they added about 18 inches to the wall in front of my house from Boar's Head down to approximately where the Atlantic Hotel is basically where the water the water splashes over and at the time when they added that 18 inches I thought why are they doing that mm -hmm. there doesn't seem to be a problem mm -hmm. but it was in anticipation of the you know the of the future and so now uh, we need to add, for instance, another 18 inches to that wall. And Fred said to me, they can't do that. And I said, why not? He says, take a walk around the wall at low tide and look at it. And I did. And I was quite amazed at what I saw. Now, if you want to see the very worst of it, when you walk around the wall, walk to where Jonathan's Hotel is, right there on the ocean side. And you'll see something very interesting because... Every 50 feet where you have, the, uh, you have that taller piece all along the wall, every 50 feet where that is, there's a vertical crack from the top of the wall right down to the base. And the thing is that at the, the Jonathan's is the worst example. What's happening is that at the very base of the wall, um, the cement has disintegrated, and so you have the, a girder. You have a steel girder that's been exposed for years to salt water, and when steel expand, it, when it rusts or corrodes, it expands, so it blows away more of the cement. And so you have quite an interesting problem there. And the most interesting thing I saw was not just the vertical breaks 
all the way down, which probably could be um, st stress breaks mm -hmm. in, them, in themselves because you, the wall itself has rebar and all of that. But at that point at Jonathan's, there's actually a horizontal uh, crack as well, about six feet up off the, off the footing. And it's on the, ocean, on the, dr on the uh, ocean Boulevard side of right at that exact spot, the sewer and the sidewalk collapsed last summer and they had to do an emergency repair to it, okay? And you can see where the hot top's been replaced, right directly across from Jonathan's uh, Hotel. So I think that that's important. The one other thing I wanted to mention is that um, I just wonder, I just wonder how far $8 million is gonna get us, but, and I know, I don't, I don't need an answer, but I'm just wondering to myself, and I was thinking to myself, you know, if, if the state um, redid the sidewalks from the bridge all the way up to High Street and as well took care of the drainage, I think that you would put smiles on a lot of people's faces that are taxpayers in the town of Hampton that would very much like to see that because the sidewalks on both sides of the street have deteriorated. There is no sidewalk on the on the west side. Basically, it's it's an absolute. I'm surprised the state hasn't been sued, or some by a handicap, or you know, some somebody that just can't go down that that sidewalk because it's in such terrible shape. But the the interesting thing is that after this past winter, the sidewalk from Boar's Head South, um, because the water went over and pushed so much, there are several, they're big cracks every so many feet, and they're actually inches wide now. Um, so that sidewalk is not in best repair neither. So anyway, if you would consider, if you would consider that, please, I think that that would, as I said, put some smiles on some of the locals in this, probably people in this room. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else that wants to? Yes. Hi, my name is Ed Brackett. I live at Nine Fellows Ave. Uh, I just wanted to comment that I've been coming here since I've been 10 years old. My folks uh, own a place on Mooring Drive, and I now have a year-round residency for the past five years on Fellows Ave. Um, I've watched the traffic over the years. I got my learner's permit and drove here. Um, I think three things. I think that it would be a travesty to put parking next to the ocean between Ashworth and Boar's Head. That's one of the nicest rides I think in the state for as short as it is um, I understand that we have a lot of money I think there were some great ideas put into the design but having watched the traffic now for five years for 50 years but focused really for the past for almost five years I think some simple things would solve the problem it's a small area it attracts a lot of people there's gonna be traffic in the 50 years I've been coming here I think the traffic is better now than it's ever been I think it moves faster, it moves better. Um, to me, the simple fixes would be when, when the police put the, the blockage in front of the casino to focus people crossing, to ma make a massive difference. Again, I live here, I'm trying to get on and off the beach during the summer, and I'm amazed at how fast it moves. And that made a, a massive difference when they did that. Something like that for the entire summer season, I think, really would work. The second thing is moving or really doing an assessment on the crosswalks because what you have is you have the crosswalks basically on the wrong side. The, the, the people are trying to get into um, Ocean Boulevard. The crosswalks, the people in the crosswalks stop everybody. If they were prior to the exits from the parking and exits from the streets, as people are crossing, people could get out of those side streets. And you watch it, and it doubles the delay because – People cross, and then people are trying to get out. So simple change like that, I think, Great. would make a massive difference. Yeah. And the third thing, the, the third thing is, is I, I actually enjoy walking down and watching the disaster at the at the, the state park. Um, how, how bad it is! It's just, you really feel bad for people. I do laugh, but I do feel bad for them. Um, I don't understand why we don't do so. It, it's, I drove it again today, I went over the bridge, I said, what a great ride. But do a simple thing like increase the toll places at the state park. If you put another toll booth, you know, getting in where they pay, so you have two or three 
avenues to get in there that would that would expedite because no matter what you do outside if you have one or two people collecting the money and telling people where to go you just you see it back up it takes forever for that traffic to move so that would make a big difference getting them in the in the park and the second thing is is i don't understand with with eight million dollars to hire two extra policemen or pay them some overtime and at key times in front of the state park having a policeman direct traffic just to get it moving because what you see is you see People come up Ashworth, the left lane, instead of going around, you, you go around uh, onto uh, Ocean Boulevard and there's no traffic at all because everybody jumps over on Ashworth, gets into that one lane, and then they run into that disaster at the state park so nobody can go anywhere. So if there was somebody actually just moving the traffic in front of the state park, again, just like a pipe, you can't go from one-inch pipe to a half-inch pipe. you got to open up the access to that state park. People would move in faster, have a policeman directing traffic, and then at the other end, if, if there's an issue coming off of Highland next to the, Ash, uh, the Ashworth Hotel, just helping people get out of there at really high times. As far as the turn on to 101, in 50 years, I've been driving since I've been 15, 16, it's never been a problem. It, it backs up. If you know the beach at all, and most people have been coming here forever, you get in the right lane, it slows down a little bit. As soon as you pass that turn onto, to get onto 101 Church Street, you take off, you enjoy your little ride, and you can get out when it kind of, you can get out several different ways out into the world faster than trying to drive down 101. So to me, a couple of simple changes like that first, and, and that keeps the flavor of the beach. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Hi, my name is Irene Morrison. I live at 14 Fellows Ave. I am going to keep this brief. All I keep rolling around in my head is a line in a Joni Mitchell tune. They paved paradise to put up a parking lot. Let's not be that town that paved paradise to put up a parking lot. And for all of you that live on the other side of town, that have the water problems and the wall problems, the infrastructure problems, the crack problems. Let's put our $8 million to good use. Let's not put juggernauts all over the place, confuse everybody, and just add pavement to a beautifully, um, if Linda Gephardt was here, you know, it's just beautiful down there. Help the people that have the flooding issues, the wall issues, the crack issues, all of those issues. Let's use that money for good use. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Anyone else? John Nyan, uh, 2 Walnut Avenue. I just need to, um, I'd like to just talk about three sections of the entire plan. One is a clarification. Um, Back in 2001, when the master plan was written, written by employee, uh, not employees, but members of the planning board at the time, designated individuals that lived in Hampton, they drew up their recommendations from the master plan at the beach. One of their recommendations back in 2001 was to make Ashworth Avenue two ways. That was a recommendation. That recommendation was never addressed until recently here at the Beach, Beach Commission when they asked to say, all right, do we keep it one way or do we keep it two ways? Throughout a number of public hearings, it was very clear, especially through public safety, it was very clear that that part of the master plan should be edited to say, no, it cannot be two ways, it has to be one way. And this, this plan, that was uh, pointed out at the public hearing at Marston School shows very clearly that that component of the recommendation of the Beach Commission says it has to stay one way. So that's my, f my first comment. The second comment is the bridge area. It would be my recommendation to the Commission to table any recommendations in that area until the bridge design is completed mm -hmm. because you don't know where that bridge is going to be. You don't know what impact that will have in terms of a third lane coming into the state park. You don't know what impact that will have closer to the harbor. So I would suggest 
that the Beach Commission right now table any discussion until the bridge design is further discussed. That's the second. The third point, and it, this is very dear to me, because when we look at Havel Street up to Ashworth, you look at a road that has nine layers of asphalt from the original road, nine layers. Those nine layers over the period of time has done away with sidewalks and has damaged drainage. My recommendation in that particular area is that we move forward with what the plan recommendations are because anybody that is down on Hampton Beach anytime during the summer, not only people that live here, not only people that rent here, but the tourists that come in here just for the day trips, we are putting them in a very bad safety hazard because you don't have sidewalks. You do not have sidewalks and anytime you come up Ocean Boulevard, you're talking two lanes of traffic and you're talking thousands of people that are walking on the road. There is no sidewalk. They're walking on the road. God forbid that one of these summers, a little child happens to run out or somebody who's driving their car automatically looks at a text, turns that head down for a minute and hits somebody. So to me, a critical safety component of this plan is from Havel Street to Ash, uh, Ashworth Hotel. And I, and I would recommend that that part of the plan be recommended in the master plan. That's my comments. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Seeing, not, uh, seeing none, I will close the public comment period. Um, I know that that $8 million number got thrown out there. <laughs> And that basically is the beginning of the engineering for the reconstruction. And that is just the beginning. That is not the amount of money to do the job. So you need to understand that. Am I correct there, Mr. D.O.T.? Okay. Just so you know that. It's just for the planning. We, we are talking about, you know, the flow of traffic, the, the uh, safety and the parking recommendations for the area. In the fall, they will start with the $8 million using some of that to do the engineering of it, which will include the drainage. Primarily include the drainage, right? Is there anything else that it will include other than? It will attempt to address as many of the things that we, that we have talked that, about that here. That we have talked about here. Right. right. Yeah. So whatever we put into the master plan, which will get approved by the town planning board, correct? Um, we'll go forward. So I think we've heard what you have said, um, and I'm going to bring it back to the commissioners, and I'm going to start with Mr. Preston. Mr. Preston, please tell me five remarks that you heard at the public hearing that resonated with you. Well, I think the uh, we'll start at the South Beach there. Um, looking at that entrance to the state park, uh, I think that there's a meeting coming up on June 12th at the at the seashell, the pavilion. <coughs> and this is the opening of the, the beach and all of the state parks managers are going to be there, including this, the state park manager. And, and I think perhaps that's the time to come in and say this needs to be straightened out because we go by there all the time and we get stuck on the bridge and we get stuck on Ashworth Avenue. And, and, and I think that he would get the, get the point if we all comment on that. The other bottleneck still down there opposite uh, at the turnabout um, where it goes just to one lane and it's hard to get by that island. I know the island is nice and it's got some beautiful plants on it but if there was a way for us to have two lanes there so there's one lane if on, and which would be the left lane that cars could go up to the state park and make their left to get in that would stop blocking us that want to go over the bridge. All right, I think that would clear that up. But I also think what we'd get out of that is in the, in the event of an emergency, or if we had too many people on the beach for the fireworks, we could put an officer on the south side of the bridge and have a two-lane bridge to empty out all of Ashworth Avenue. As soon as we can get rid of that gridlock, 
and get those people hundreds and hundreds of cars on the other side of the bridge on Ocean Boulevard over there, that would, would solve a lot of our problems on those certain Mr. days. Mr. Preston, yes. I just wanted you to identify five remarks that you heard from the public hearing. And then we can talk about your ideas for change after that. Okay. okay. Yep. So then we'll go up to we'll call it the, the jug handle. All right. I uh, I listen to the people saying that they the one lane if they want to go to the North Beach they have to sit in traffic there starting at Mrs. Mitchell's and perhaps even longer if there's just one lane. So I think we have to keep that as two lanes going north. I think the people were very very clear on that. Now, I've heard some people talk about the scenic way, looking at Boar's Head. Uh, I've also talked to people that said, if we park on that side of the road, then, then uh, kids and young people won't have to cross the traffic. So I can, I can certainly see that point there, too. And I think what, you know, finally, you know, this is not the end. We, we will continue to work to find more funds and work with the governor and the legislature, you know, to fix up, to continue going up Ocean Boulevard. You know, the state is, they understand what, what happens here, the investment that they have here, so I, I'm sure that they will work with us. Okay. I'll come back to you for your, really? your, your new ideas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you weren't at the I wasn't, meeting. but I'll, I'll just jump in. I, um, <clears throat> just about South Beach. We did start last year with two lanes going in at times, and I'll certainly going to make that a priority with staff that we do that more on this year. So going into uh, the park. Going into the park. Yep. Okay. You know, just one question, okay? Because I, I know we're wrapped up in this eight million dollars. We're w the commission isn't the keeper of the eight million dollars. <coughs> it's it's the legislature. Right. Okay. So. There's not going to be eight million dollars in this master plan that's written. Correct. So, I mean, so we have no say or to the extent of how that gets used and so forth. That we're working just on the master plan. So I just wanted just to make that comment. So um, the things that I heard and and basically in talking to some people, I mean, I know that um, down at the uh, the south end, um, it. There were two options. One was a rotary, and one was kind of an intersection thing. So, um, you know, I, we tossed the rotary off of the table, but it was showed to everybody. Um, I think that in the short thing, we got to figure out where that mm -hmm. bridge goes to. Um, I mean, Bobby's already, uh, Mr. Preston's already mentioned the jug handle, and I question how we, you're going to get a tractor trailer truck around that curve um, because there's one way in the beach, one way out of the beach. and. Uh, with some of the trucks that are even having a hard time doing that. I was talking to public officials, um, I mean the safety people. Um, third was the, <clears throat> was the parking, and I know that they were looking at, there's a safety side too. Um, it's how do you make it work over there, because with putting the, the, the parking at that end, you've got an in and you've got an out, as opposed to today, it's in the middle, and you're it's like you had mentioned that the safety of people walking type of a thing so but I, I have heard loud and clear that that uh, it doesn't belong on the east side um, and then we've heard drainage 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 that's the easy, the easy one not the easy one to solve but uh, it's brought up at that end um, and I th think that the other is the the main thrust of, of the say Haverhill to Mitchell's or whatever those those make sense. It, the hardest part I think we have is we just don't have enough square footage because we're talking bike paths, we're talking ADA sidewalks, and it just shortens the how much square footage we have. So, so those are mine. Thank you, Fran. Uh, I'll start on the other end of the beach, the uh, north end from Boar's Head, basically to Winnacona. Uh, I think at the public hearing, I heard very clearly and strongly uh, that people want that part mm -hmm. of the boulevard addressed. You know that the sidewalks and the drainage, particularly in that section of the beach, <coughs> going back to the south end. Um, again, clearly. Uh, the treatment of the state park and the uh, and the, uh, the harbor area um, is 
still in doubt in a lot of people's mind. Um, I happen to think the intersection will work, but that's not what you're asking us to address at this point. Uh, and then a, a most important thing, I think, is, is the section from, from the south end of Ashworth to the north end of Ashworth. Uh, there's, there's pretty much, in my mind, overwhelming support to, to do that project, and that's, it's a very important one. Um, particularly on the on the drainage side, on the on the safety side, the public safety side, the sidewalks on the west side, um, and then finally the general opposition to the parking on the uh, on the ocean side. Uh, Bob, <clears throat> one of the consistent remarks I heard was nobody was in favor of placing mm -hmm. a bathroom at Church Street, but there had been requests to place a bathroom up at Winnicunit. So that to me has merit. Having in mind that would be much closer than the middle from the beach to North Beach, where there is a facility. And placing it where no one wants it, and not placing it where people do want it, doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. I also, my general observation is when you engage the community, good things happen. The meetings are well attended. The positions expressed have merit. Uh, I am concerned with the parking issue running from Ashworth to Boarshead in particular. That current configuration, by definition, is not safe. Four-year-olds and six-year-olds and parents are jumping over those low guardrails, carrying coolers. There have been fatalities at the corner of Ocean Boulevard and Highland Avenue in the past. And at bare minimum, that Ashworth parking has to be addressed because you can't go left on Ocean Boulevard from Highland Avenue and see the cars coming up Ocean Boulevard when there are cars parked in that area. Uh, also, I would, there, this was not expressed at the meeting, but it was addressed in the letter following the meeting. The issue of sea level rise will come into play at some point in time. There's a, if you look at the results from the Sea Level Rise Commission, Pointed by the state and the recommendations of the climatologist, Dr. Ward, on that commission, which were very discouraging. His opinion was abandon the beach, do it orderly and over time, and stop development. <clears throat> I don't think anyone wants to do that. The Rockingham Planning Commission did a vulnerability assessment and said there's a billion dollars of uh, assessed value vulnerable to sea level rise in the beach. So that will come into the play before this ever happened in terms of construction. So one thing I would say everyone should keep in mind, to save the beach may require taking away that visual plane from the Ashworth Hotel mm -hmm. to Boar's Head. By that I mean there's a distinct possibility at some point in time we'll have to build a wall. Uh, I don't know, I would just conclude I think Everybody has presented valid arguments. And the most impressive thing is you've presented them pleasantly, not antagonistically, not confrontationally. And I thank you all for doing that. Okay. Bill, did you want to speak what you heard? Yeah, so um, I have most of my items, it's interesting, they, they, they point to conflicts and the priorities that people have. Um, and so one, I'm going to jump on to the the um, sea level rise and such when we talk about the area of the Ashworth to Boar's Head, but the whole area with the seawall. There's a conflict between you know, some of the comments even tonight talk about the need to focus back on what this grant was originally about, safety. Well, safety versus scenic views today versus what we may or may not be able to have for scenic views in the future if raising the seawall, and that was a comment that was made tonight even, is, is something that's needed, those are in conflict with each other. And um, you can't have all of that. At some point in time, you have to choose one priority over the other. 
And whether it's the safety of that four or six year old crossing the street with their family, or whether it's the view of the ocean today or it's the view of the ocean in the future. And I, I see that in, a, in, a, in that parking area as a um, something that still needs some flushing out before it can be decided what, what, if there is a correct consensus solution. Um, the other is, and, and um, I may not be pleasantly welcomed anymore for saying this, uh, there seems to be a big misunderstanding, and, and there's a letter from the town manager that we received tonight as well. Uh, the area from Boris Head to Winnicott was not ignored as, as part of the discussions of this plan. It was never intended to be. Uh, in fact, the full commission asked for the plan to look at Boris Head to Winnicott. And in fact, at the public hearing two weeks ago, there were recommendations made for improvements along that part of the, the, the roadway. Yet, many of the comments we have heard say, construction stops at Boris Head. There's no construction here. It's a plan. It's a plan that will help to inform a project that will lead to construction along this Ocean Boulevard corridor someday. And, and I think that that's, um, that's been missed by a lot of people. Um, heard pretty clearly that sidewalks are a priority. I think one of the things that we've struggled with as a commission, we're, we're trying to fit sidewalks and bicycles and vehicles in a square footage area that we don't have the ability to do everything that everyone wants. Um, bicycles seem to be dropping off the conversation quite a bit. Just an observation that I've taken away that we hear a lot more about sidewalks than we do about bike lanes. Um, also on parking, um, maybe I'm a little oversensitive to this, um, but I can say as a representative of the Department of Transportation, in our conversations with DREAD at the time, now Natural and Cultural Resources, it's never been a goal of the state reps on this Beach Commission to increase parking along Ocean Boulevard. That may or may not be something that happens. I mean, there's been no actual design work done. Uh, if depending on turning lanes or anything that might be changed. There may be an increase, there may be a decrease, but there's never been a stated goal, implied goal, or, or um, inferred goal that we're trying to increase parking along Ocean Boulevard. Um, and then the last thing uh, that I, I observed, and this came up at the public hearing, there were a number of people that talked about um, parking off-site and shuttling into the area. That has been something that's been discussed. Um, I think it was Mr. Waddell that brought it up at the public hearing. Um, in fact, Rockingham Planning Commission had worked on a, a study and it's come forward um, and not to, to just state what it is. Um, the final plan that was approved by the town dropped potential for an intermodal facility just off site that would have allowed for some of that shuttling of traffic onto the beach that might have made. Um, access to the beach a little bit more uh, effective and efficient. So I think those are my areas that I heard Thank about. Thank you. Uh, Rick? Yes, um, I think that the number one thing is about the road being reconstructed and the sidewalks. And I think it's more than just the area from Haverhill to Ashworth. People want guarantees that it's going to go to Winnicunna Road. That's not what they feel that's happening here. And no one feels that that's part of the, uh, that that's really going to happen. Everyone feels it's not going to happen. And that's the big thing I heard. And you know, I can tell you that it's nine layers of um, asphalt all along um, Ocean Boulevard from Boar's Head to Winnicunna Road too. It's the same exact as it is from Haverhill to the Ashworth. There is no difference. The sidewalks aren't functional. Either most of them have fallen away. So there's a big problem. So number one is roads and sidewalks. Number two is safety, which is part of the original plan. And I think that <clears throat> there's been a lot of discussion about crosswalks. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's, and that's something that constantly happens at the Board of Selectmen, and we always feel that we don't have any say at the Board of Selectmen because it's, you know, it's on a, a state road. So safety and mainly about the crosswalks. Number three is drainage. Number four is um, 
you know, about that mile of scenic highway, uh, parking, whatever you want to call it, um, I can see the advantages of, uh, you know, that people wouldn't have to cross over. But I think what I heard is people definitely don't want to miss that chance to throw grandma in the car and take her for a ride to the beach from Manchester and drive along. She can't get out of the car. So they want, she wants to drive there. She wants to go up and have an ice cream somewhere. And uh, that's a big thing. They just want to drive by and see the ocean. And the other part of it is when they are driving by to see the ocean and they're headed north, they're headed towards Winnicunit Road. And when they're driving by and headed south, they're coming from Winnicunit Road. So I think that is the main problem here with the plan right from the beginning. And I know that we've said that there's going to be this and that, but people just don't feel it. And that's the problem. It hasn't been sold to the people that something will be done there. The drainage is just atrocious. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be massive development here. And, you know, one thing, I made a, a list um, myself, and I think people forget, um, but there were 11 hotels and restaurants from Boar's Head to Winnicunit Road. They're not there anymore because they're condos. And, uh, but there are people living in those condos, and those people want some satisfaction. Thank you. Okay. And before I tell you what my five are, I will tell you I had the opportunity this afternoon to be over in Rye at a bridge event, and I see someone in the audience that was there, and uh, my conversation with um, one of the consultants who will also be the consultant for the bridge and possibly for 1A. I'm not sure whether they'll still be the consultants for 1A or not, but they will definitely be the consultants for the bridge. And um, her plan is to have a public hearing <coughs> in August. I said, if you're going to have a public hearing, please have it at the beginning of your, of your study and listen to what people have to say. And um, so she is thinking about having it in August. So keep that in the back of your mind so that you can all show up in August if you want to talk about the bridge. The five things that I heard, uh, five areas that I heard, and one of them was a bit simple one, but it was the suggestion about having a shuttle bring the um, staff, or the workers in from, from Winnicott High School to the beach and doing a, you know, a shift change. One in the morning, one at noon when you change it, one in the afternoon when you change it, so that it keeps all of those kids' cars off the beach. That would help keep some of the cars off the beach. Uh, the second thing I, uh, that resonated with me was the need to maintain the character uh, and that view for the mile on the beach, uh, which you don't see many other places. But in that mile, also to think about the drainage of, of the uh, whole area. Um, a little louder. It's hard to hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, <clears throat> The um, jug handle, I heard a lot of discussion about the jug handle at the, at the uh, public hearing. Um, didn't seem that many people were happy with it. Um, then the uh, travelers from uh, coming down from, from Church Street to Boys Head, they like to have, be able to cut in and make the turn to go north. They don't want to have to come all the way down the beach to turn around to go all the way back. So the ability to cut through parking uh, was important. Um, the need to maintain two lanes north up to Winnicott to get to help vehicles move off the beach and to maintain a bicycle path because while maybe you and I don't go bicycling there are a lot of people that do and I think that's going to be the future so I think we need to make sure when we're doing um, reconstruction that we try to make available the bike lanes as well as on the west side of the street, um, pull-offs for um, trucks to unload their goods for the re restaurants and so forth. So those are my five things. Um, now, since I skipped over, um, I wanted to announce that um, William Rose is here. William, will you want to raise your hand? And um, P uh, Peter, uh, Pete Clary is here. And you have a guest with you, do you? 
or is? Yeah, this is Robin Bowser, DHP as well. Oh, welcome, Robin. Well, thank you for being here. I know you're here to listen to what we have to discuss tonight. And um, William, can you tell me that uh, what I would like to do tonight is to listen to what some of the commissioners have for ideas, if there are any points that they would like to point out on the map for any change. Um, and then I would like to meet in a couple of weeks to begin to take it by blocks. Uh, how much time will you need for to, to develop language for the master plan? To do the write up? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, a good two months anyway, and then pushing it, probably. Okay, so if we do that in June, the first of June, it's going to be end of July. End of July or first of August? August. Pardon me? August. First of August? Early August. Early August. Yeah. Early August. And then um, you'd bring that back for us to review, and um, we would move it from there. And we have to have that done by August 30th. Is that correct? Uh, that's, that is the, the goal that we set. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, commissioners, you can keep that in mind. So if we work hard and get it done as quickly as we can, um, we should get it back a little bit sooner. Mr. Preston, do you, I have I have a pointer here. Are you sure, Nancy? I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. If you'd like to use my pointer, you may go up to the map so that you can point out what your thoughts are. No. Uh, well, I, I started to talk about the south end, and I and I think I made that point, so I don't have to go over that again. Uh, somewhere along the line, we were talking about the middle sidewalk on the main beach because the, what I'll call it, the scenic sidewalk is, is fine, it's beautiful, it's big enough, but the commercial sidewalk in front of the stores, in some cases, is only four feet wide, five feet wide, the way some of the restaurants like the boardwalk are now out. So that actually pushes people into the breakdown lane, you know, so they're actually in the road. If we're going to be digging up all of Ocean Boulevard, you know, perhaps part of that sidewalk could be moved over to our side so that it would be, it would be a safer spot for the people, the pedestrians walking along. Lots of times they're walking two and three abreast, and when that happens, now they're in the road. <clears throat> so I, I think that would be a good improvement. The, um, the part that I, I think... Uh, disturbs me the most is what we're going to call the jug handle. I think if we vote for that, they're going to call us jug heads. I live in the middle of that, so I, and I'm looking down at that traffic all the time. What we have now is working, you know, with two lanes going north from, from we'll call it Mrs. Mitchell's. That left lane, uh, people are pretty good, they, they're patient, they stay in line, and they're going to work their way up to Church Street. The people in the right lane, I say there's three kinds of people there. There's the people that are going to the North Beach. They don't want to be stuck on the main beach. We don't want to give people a reason not to come, and we want them to, to do come to the beach. If they have that right lane the way it is, they can go home on time. They get very little uh, backups. You know, the, you get a couple other people that go up and do the U-turn like the regulars, which is fine. It's working. Um, coming south, I don't have a problem with the one lane. I think that's okay, but I, I do think we need uh, a loading zone or a breakdown lane. You know, we talk about the hot hotels that, that aren't there, but we have condos that are there. And if people are trying to pull in and out, it's, it's easier, you know, for them to pull in from, from that loading zone. Or if people are going to Oceanside Real Estate or Harris Real Estate or, or the, the Hampton House, they got to stop in and pick up a key. You can't have them parking in the middle of a southbound lane. We're only going to have a problem there. As it is now that we have two lanes, so people can can drive around. To the problem with when we get up to, um, we'll get. I'm going to say Surfside 30 because we had one lady from Surfside 30. She said it's very hard to to take a left there. Um, most of the time, that parking lot, if it if it gets moved to that side, most of the time that's going to be empty. I think she'll be able to go down, take a right out of Surfside 30, go into the parking lot, and come back north. 
So she won't have that dangerous turn out of her house. I think a lot of people would, would continue to do that. So um, that's the gist of my ideas. I do like John Nyan's idea about holding off on the South Beach um, traffic light because you don't really know where the new bridge is going to land, which side, how far. If it's a high bridge, it's going to land longer on both sides. So, thank you for letting me finish, Nancy. <laughs> you're, well, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, do you have any suggestions? No, I'm not. Dean? Um, I guess starting at the south end with a bridge, we've just got to know what more is going on. <coughs> I know we had talked to um, uh, a couple of town officials and and also the uh, harbor master was was uh, we got some things and the extent of what uh, Uder had mentioned about making turns and key you know backing up of um, you know cars with boats and that type of thing and there might be a way to uh, his his comment was is to try to close that off rather than making that an intersection there so someone would have to then go out and around to queue up to give more room to queue up for boats in the morning or or that type of thing um, hopping over to um, up to the, to the jug handle area or just to I, I went a little further and caught up with a, the, the, you know we were talking about safety and so forth and I think that our, um, our chief and so forth have kind of instituted some things and he had mentioned about in order and we're really caught with big traffic flow at you know fourth of july or you know say a busy weekend down there and and he's instituted he has he has three he calls them details but basically he's figured a way one detail on the north end um to try to direct direct traffic to, to cut out and head to the north beach and try to leave via high street another one in the middle so uh of the park parking areas um so no one can cut through and the third one at um, at uh, the entrance there with, where the Oceanside Hotel is so he is already working some things just along with the fence too and he says that that has worked so much better and it's and we have a buildup of traffic at a certain time type of a thing and, and I think that maybe we can address that so I just don't think that 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 handle is just gonna it just isn't enough square footage to work it and uh, um, and then basically as we head up to the north end around Boar's Head, um, you know, do we need four lanes of traffic there? I mean, I think there's an opportunity to try to figure out, you know, maybe one 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 way, two another way, parking your cars in a different way because I don't know if that fills up as much, but I think there's an opportunity to really work that area, and I. Um, but I know we have to work the drainage end first. Um, so those are kind of my thoughts where I'm at. But I, I can't see taking those two lanes. I mean, that change that where it's two north and two south, you know, into one and one. That's just, that's just going to bottleneck the whole place. Okay. Fran. Any place we, uh, we talk about a one-lane section on the boulevard, I think we need to take into consideration service vehicles you know the trash trucks there the cable guys there the uh, gas guys there the electric guys there from time to time so you know they're there all the time um and you need to make sure you have enough space to, to accommodate and i think bob touched on some of them where people are trying to pick up keys and things like that um, the other thing that strikes me is it seems like a lot of things we're talking about we can do a lot of short-term things you know this plan uh, to get put in the ground is as many years in the future uh, several years in the future I mean I think it's it's clear what the police have done with the uh, the barricades along the west side of Ocean Boulevard are uh, it, it, a lot of people are happy with them they function well uh, and that's something if, if we can if we need to fund them uh, or just make them a, a permanent uh, solution we should do that the crosswalks we've heard a lot about the crosswalks um, and we should make sure they get painted they get signed um, in, in the area of the uh, state beach the state park 
uh, the crosswalk situation there is a little more complicated, but I think uh, you, you see the ones that we've put in town, you know, the flashing uh, pedestrian uh, signs. Uh, maybe that's appropriate to do in the short term at that particular place. Uh, um, let's see, I had something else, but uh, I'll come back. Okay. Bob? I also think the jug handle is highly suspect. I'd be from Missouri on that traffic flow idea because basically the northbound lane is stopped when you have the Turt Street traffic moving on to Turt Street. Right now, the ocean lane going north can continue to flow. So it seems like you double the negative rather than having it. As far as the parking, I don't think I can form an opinion as the best place to put that parking so we know what the implications of sea level rise will be and how they will be addressed. At a minimum, if the parking were to stay in the center of that road, I would strongly recommend that chain link fences be put along all those guardrails to prevent people from jumping them in between the openings and something to improve the quality of those crosswalks. They don't really work. And as it is now in cars are parked, people come to the crosswalk but you can't always see them, depending on whether they're children or adults. It's just, I'm just uncomfortable with the safety component and I, I'm sure we can do something to improve it. Did you want to say anything, uh, Rick? Yeah, well, I'm gonna, one of my things I was gonna say as I'll build right on what um, he just said about the mm -hmm. crosswalks. Uh, I think that, and I was looking at them today because I've heard uh, actually some of the selectmen saying, they haven't painted those crosswalks. Well, when I was driving along today, they looked to me like they have been painted. Mm -hmm. They're kind of uh, just plain white. And I don't think they are consistently look the same. So I think what they need to do is uh, come up with a color scheme for the crosswalks, whether it would be you know, that type of brick type of look that crosses the road that you see in so many places today. A nice area where they do it is Kittery, uh, all on the main streets there. I don't know how, if it's expensive or whatever, but you can see those crosswalks. And if there was a, if the crosswalks had some consistency and maybe the color like of that brick, people would get used to it and they would be more willing to stop and take a look when people are trying to cross. So I think that's a big safety issue uh, that could help. Um, also, it's been mentioned here tonight about those barricades that they put on that are sort of temporary along Ocean Boulevard. <clears throat> I hear a lot of people uh, say that really they are, uh, they've been very, very effective. I personally, myself, I don't really like the way they look that much, and maybe they could be improved somewhat. Um, to look, ha you know, if something was done on a more permanent, um, uh, make them more permanent and uh, improve the way they look a little bit. And I do think that I've heard here that the state really isn't crazy about those. Uh, I've heard that factor mentioned many times, but. It seems like people like them, and it does sort of help uh, the flow of traffic because people seem to cross at the right areas and stuff like that. So if those were done and maybe the crosswalks were incorporated with them, it might be uh, a good factor. Um, another thing that, and I've, you know, there's so much talk about the drainage. I think that we have to realize where is this drainage going to go? Uh, particularly down on Ocean Boulevard, uh, where um, it would go down those lettered streets, it would have to hook to the town on uh, drainage. And I know I've talked to the town manager, and he says that if the drainage does hook to those uh, to the town drains, first of all, it's going to put a big burden on the town. We already have a problem with our our uh, uh, drainage going to the wastewater treatment center. So that really has to be, that should be a key uh, area of discussion. And the town has not been cons um, at all uh, informed in any way 
according mm -hmm. to the town manager. So that's something that that conversation should definitely start. And that same drainage discussion should continue down to the area at, at Winnicunnet Road, uh, mm -hmm. going to Winnicunnet Road. And I think that that, the big thing to me is I think all of the sidewalks, at least to Winnicunnet Road, should be replaced. They just look absolutely awful. And you know, today there was a lady uh, and there's been talk about this drag racing, which I realize that's not a discussion here for tonight. But I think one thing that brings it up in people's mind is today on the news, uh, a mother was killed in Tampa, Florida, and her baby's clinging to its life. And uh, that is something like that's going to happen here in Hampton because I constantly, all summer long, when the drainage, and it's not from the marsh or anything like that, it comes from the rain. I see baby carriages having to go out into the road all the time. Not just baby carriages, people in wheelchairs, and then people that don't even, that are just walking along. Somebody, there's going to be a big problem, and those sidewalks have to be replaced. And, um, and again, that drainage has, something has to happen. You can't expect people to, crawl, to go out into the road. It's unbelievable how I, I have a view of it right outside my window and it constantly happens every single time it rains so you know that's the things that I think that need to be dealt with first okay <clears throat> before I tell you what I think uh, I want to let you know that we received 15 letters after the uh, public hearing last week uh, including one from the Board of Selectmen this evening. So um, we do have, each one of the commissioners has a copy of those, and I sent them to them as early as I could, as early as we received them, so that they'd have a chance to read them before tonight. But I, I want to make sure that you have the opportunity to read them before we come back to make any decisions uh, on anything. That's, that's 15 new ones. Not, I mean, in, those are in addition to the ones we got. No, t a total of 15. Okay. The only one I haven't given to you is the one we got tonight. Okay. Okay. All right, I have to get up to show you what I think. <laughs> I talk better when I'm standing. Uh, I had the opportunity to meet with several different people and got some great ideas from them. Um, so this is my fault, okay? <laughs> uh, down here at the as far as the, I think we can't really do much until we know where the, where the bridge is going to land. But there are some little things that we might do that might help the uh, flow. And that is, um, down here, is to not make this an, an exit here. Not to cut that right off. Leave it just as it is right now. So you just have traffic flowing back and forth and going into the state park. Um, one of the people I chatted with said we should have not only one lane, but maybe two lanes to get them off, to get into the state park. Widen the state park road. Are you listening, Mike? I am listening. Uh, <laughs> so widen the state, uh, widen the road to get in, yeah. so that uh, it'll take the traffic. Um, then over here, um, this would not be here. Down here, down in front of Ocean Walk, there's a piece of cement, like a. Uh, Oh, a piece of cement is what it is. And behind it, it's all marked off with uh, yellow markers, which is state-owned property. Take that hunk of island and swing it in. Cut off, as someone said earlier, the uh, entrance on this side so that the cars don't go shooting through the uh, parking lot and turn into harbor. I, when I was standing on that little island there, the car came whoosh, right behind me and went right down the harbor. Well, if there are cars parked in the parking lot trying to get out, that creates a problem. So if you do, did that, then you would bring, where are we here? Uh, harbor Road. You'd bring Harbor Road straight back out where it is now, and then post a stop sign for the people coming from this area so that they stop. People coming out to Harbor Road come right to the end. Okay, that should eliminate that traffic. It leaves this, this part here for the uh, queuing up for the, to get into the, the um, marinas here. And I also shared that with the um, director of P Ports and Harbors. And he said, yeah, Nancy, that gives us exactly what we have right now and that, wor that works. Mm -hmm. So that would leave that similar to what it is right now. 
Uh, going down here, I just want to make sure that there's room for bicycle paths down here and pull off areas for on, on the west side of the street. I, I don't. Have, I mean, I don't think there was much discussion in through this this area here. Um, if you remove the sidewalk, as I think you said, on the east side of the street, which the middle, get, the middle sidewalk, the middle sidewalk, <clears throat> the one that's the one that is in front of all of the new facilities, uh, up to the playground, probably up to the playground, and people can walk along the ocean sidewalk, and then they can come back out. Where am I here? They can come back out to the to um, the playground. And, and uh, is it Dover Avenue? Haverhill. 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 Okay. Um, when you get up here to to Church Street, um, the end of Ashworth and into uh, Church Street, Highland Avenue is where people come to the beach uh, from 101. And until the town uh, and the state can get together and think about um, doing something on, uh, on Church Street by making that a two-way road to get out. That way they would come in on Highland, two lanes, over, out on Church in two lanes. I realize there's houses and everything else along there, there's a church along there and everything else, but if you begin to look at um, what it might cost to widen that road, it would help alleviate some of the traffic. And I don't like the parking along here. I still like it in the middle. And if you if you mark the road, this is one way, you know, it should help with the traffic. Um, I like this scenic view. Mm -hmm. I like that left there. And when you round the corner at Boar's Head, up beyond Dumas Avenue, I don't know, is this grass in here? The green is grass, yeah. Okay, well, People are used to having a sidewalk right along there, so you can forget the grass because nobody's going to have the time to mow it anyway. So just have the sidewalk run right along where it runs right now. And um, on this, I don't know if that would give you any space here, um, but maybe in this area here you could start to make your parking come back to here. And um, that's where the elevation is different, I believe. Yeah. And so if you have your parking up here on the elevation, kids just go right to the beach. There's no crossing uh, a couple lanes of traffic. And then make sure that we have marked um, crosswalks for um, people that live on the west side so that there's a place for them to walk across to, to get to the beach. Then when you get up here, um, we have been asked, we haven't, people have been asking me for at least eight years to have some sort of a facility at the end of Winter County Road. So if you put it on the north, East corner, right there. It doesn't have to be a big one. It can be two female stalls, a urinal, and a single male stall. It doesn't have to be a big one. Uh, right there. People walking the sidewalk, which we have thousands of walkers, could use it. People using the parking area, as far back as you want to take it, could also use it. And they would stop in going to Rick's house place to use his bathroom and <laughs> other people's homes as well. So that's just, that's where I am. So, and I hope you got all of these things. Um, <laughs> in, uh, Ann and, <laughs> Ann and Jason, um, I know that you're not officially commissioners, but is there anything that you heard that we missed or are any thoughts that you had that we should be thinking of? I think it was covered very well, actually, Nancy, by everybody. Um, first, I'd like to say that I think it's great that the public came out for the meeting and is here this evening. I think the public process is a very important part of this whole thing. Um, we did hear a lot of comments about the parking along the, uh, the beach side, and um, I think those need to be taken into consideration. On that note, I do think as discussed crosswalks and, and things and improving the crosswalks down there, maybe some sort of signalized beacon or something in certain areas, things to improve you know, pedestrian crossing there to ma help make it safer. Um, definitely too, all the paving on the roadway, um, getting that you know more consistent because now your roadway is, was stated as higher than your sidewalks in some cases to make it more pedestrian friendly there. Um, I do know that the item about sea level rise was raised in one of the letters that was uh, 
that was presented to the uh, commissioners, and uh, that is something that I know that the uh, the Coastal Risks and Hazard Commission <clears throat> and uh, and Pine River, uh, not Pine River, um, Rocking and Planning Commission had taken into consideration in, in their tides to storms <laughs> uh, reporting. Um, I have made some notes. I think the, the drainage issues I mentioned as well um, being very important that people wanted to hear um, those being more addressed than up toward Winnicunit Road, just improvements in general up that way. Um, and I do agree as well about, you know, coordination with the bridge project because you don't know exactly how that bridge is going to fall into place over time. So I think that any improvements there have to be either put on hold or very carefully considered with, with, with that uh, bridge work. Those are my thoughts based on what I heard. And when you finish writing, is there anything that you've heard us discuss before that we haven't brought up? The one thought that, because I went, I went back to the master plan and found it says traffic and parking should no longer dominate the streetscape, and I kind of like that idea. And um, I did hear public comment about um, traffic study. Heard that several times. I'd like to suggest that we also do a pedestrian traffic study from the available parking areas and then look to parking areas in town that might eventually shuttle people in and that might inform the vehicular traffic patterns some. Um, other than that I think that solving the drainage issues under the roads has to happen before anything can be done above the roads to make it pretty. Well, Dean and I were in a conversation with someone with knowledge um, about drainage. And <clears throat> because um, I said, why don't you just put one big pipe down <laughs> under, <laughs> under Ashworth Avenue and just take it out and dump it into the river? <laughs> and, um, because you can't do it in the ocean, you're not supposed to do it in the river, and you can't do it in the marsh. And what he was telling me is that it would have to go through a tr treatment, uh, some sort of a treatment. It's hazard water, and it has yeah. to be treated. It has so to be treated. it doesn't matter where but, it's coming from, but it's got to be treated. I think he had some ideas on that uh, as to, you know, a couple of places that it that might happen. And so um, I think there is opportunity for us to actually take care of the drainage at the beach properly and environmentally safe to do it, to do that. So it's possible. It's possible. The other little thought I had in connection with peop moving people and dealing with remote parking areas is that the chamber has been doing that successfully for years for the seafood festival. So there's there's a model in place that could be looked at for. There is, a, there is a model for that, but I have to think of when I was much younger and had three little kids that I was lugging to the beach. Would I take a shuttle to the beach or would I rather bring my car down and pack it right up against the wall and get out and go to the beach? So I, I don't know what the usage would be, you know. It may, you may have some and eliminate some, but I think getting the, the people that are work the workers. Yes. If you could coordinate the workers, that would take care of some of it. It so. would, and I, every little bit will help. Okay. Um, okay, guys. Yes. You just, <clears throat> I thought I mentioned to Peter. You know, we're we're fighting with for for all this square footage in the, the road from the sidewalk to, to the seawall. If in that area of just prior to the jug handle, instead of having two rows of cars pulling in, if one of them could be a parallel, that would give you the space to have the other lane going north. You follow me? Yeah, yeah, that might, that we lose some parking, but the road is wider and, and then that also might give you a little bit more room for the bike path because it just, there's only so much room there. Yeah. yeah. Can I just ask sure. one question? Um, and I don't know if Jason would know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask anyway. Because uh, I did hear this again from um, Fred Welch. Uh, 
if the water that drains off of Ocean Boulevard was to be hooked to the uh, the lettered streets um, into our uh, you know drainage area, would would does that would that cause the uh, drainage to become worse on Ashworth Avenue, like on the side streets other to the west of Ashworth Avenue? Would that cause like a blockage where the water would meet and then it would cause more floodage on the west side I of Ashworth Avenue? I do not know the answer to that, Rick. I yeah. think we'd have to take a look at it a little more. I wouldn't want to make an assumption on yeah. that. Because that's something Fred has a real concern with. Well, and well, I, th I think when we talk about the drainage, we've got to have the town and the, and the state coordinate mm -hmm. that and work together to find a solution. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that when I talk with him, that's one of the big things that sounds like, oh my God, that would really be a nightmare if that happened. So that's something I think we have to really look at. And one other thing I wanted to ask, and maybe it's because I missed one meeting right before. Um, what about whatever happened to the parking that was dedicated to the Ashworth Hotel? You know how they have parking right in front of the... Yes, I know they do. Yeah. yeah, and then I heard it referred to that where there was going to be an area where you would pull in before... Well, now it sounds like we won't be having the parking on the right-hand side, but there was going to be an area to let people out for 15 minutes right there in front of the Ashworth. Uh, at one time, I heard that 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 was going to be spaces that would go to the Ashworth. Then another time at the meeting that we had, I heard it referred to as if it was going to become a drop-off spot. <clears throat> Are there still going to be dedicated spaces to the Ashworth there? Or was, has that been dropped out totally? That was before me, so any of you... Uh, I don't think that's a master plan conversation that's more well, of an operation at our meetings it's been brought up over and over again that they sure, were there was going to be a new parking space for the Ashworth Hotel and I didn't see it on this plan so all of a sudden it sort of dropped out of that, that's a lease agreement right or a use agreement yes yeah. Yeah. yeah and so the, the solution we came up with was that there would be accommodation for those spaces but ultimately it would be left to the two parties that own and want to use to come to an agreement as to which spaces that goes S yeah. So it's more of an operational nature where there is parking. Do the owners of the Ashworth want to work with the owners of that parking to come up with a lease arrangement, as they do now? But is that still the same area that was referred to as a 15-minute drop-off? It's not that area? No. Nope. No, okay. But there, in that area, there is a memorial uh, garden, and I would hate to see that disturbed. The statue is, you mean? No, no. Across, across from oh. the statue. It's the one for yeah, um, Norman. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, unless you want to begin working now, I'd like you to think about what some of the suggestions that the commissioners have uh, offered, and think about um, what is the thousand-foot language that you would like to see in the master plan going forward because all of the details I mean even the details that I spoke to of the island being swung in that that's all with the engineering piece it's not really master plan stuff but um, I don't think it is anyway so you want to start working now or you want to come back in two weeks and when you've had a chance to think about this whole thing and go back and, and look at them do you all have copies of the master plan what about the fact that the master plan really goes all the way to High Street? Yeah. So the this plan, this study that we're talking about is going to, as far as the master plan itself, is going to be addressed all the way to High Street? I think we need to update the language in the master plan. And in to the original master plan, it goes to High Street, I believe. Yeah. And um, so we're looking at language to fill in where there is transportation, safety, and parking. So... Um, I have a Excel sheet, Excel sheet, is that right? Mm -hmm. That William sent me um, that I can send out to you guys uh, if you want to take a look at that. And if you don't have a copy of the master plan, let me know, and I'll get it electronically and send it to you so that you can go through it. And it's on the town website. I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I printed it out this afternoon. Okay. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> well, parts of it. <laughs> so, um, 
if you want, well, you can go to the town website and look at it. I don't need to send it to you electronically. It's, planning. it's there electronically for you. If you want to print it, you can print it. Um, yeah, I also have to realize that this this is just one part of the master plan. We still have work to do on environmental other, other sections that also. The environmental ones. Those ought to be fun. <coughs> okay, um, Mike, I missed you. Do you have an update on the? Yeah, treasurer's report. Treasurer's report. We did have some expense. Um, our balance right now is nine thousand eighteen and forty-three cents. That invoice did get paid. Okay. All right. Were you going to give him an invoice for? Pardon me. Were you going to give him a bill for your, for all the maps and stuff? For that. Yeah. Thing there? Yeah. Yeah. That was sixty bucks, folks. It's upside down. Well, that's what Pete, Pete said. <laughs> I said I like it that way because I'm falling on the road there. That's why I'm driving on the road. Um, yeah, I was told to go to Staples. Mm -hmm. They don't have anything that big. So, we're so I stopped into FedEx just out of chance, and they did it for me. Okay, do I hear a motion? Was there was there agreement and identification of a date for your next meeting? Pardon me? Did you have a date for your date next, for meeting? next meeting? Okay. Pull out your calendars, folks. Today is the 26th, no, 24th. 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 Uh, so two weeks will be the 7th, unless you want to do it in one week, which is right around Memorial Day, so I'm not sure you want to do that. But 7th is probably better than 7th is good for me. How about everybody? Because I want everybody at the table. Fine. Good. Okay. Fine with me. Okay. Seventh, I think when I looked at the town calendar, I don't think this room was booked for the seventh. Yeah. So I will see if we can get it again. I, mean, so. I, I will also say about this room per se, because we talked with the um, the IT gentleman from the TV, and 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 the end of end of June. Um, this place is going to be closed because they, they're upgrading to HD and all that stuff. So he was, because uh, we were talking, and he said, well, you guys usually meet the 3rd, and you know, they're starting, I think, on the 21st and ending on the 29th. So if we had to do something in those areas, we'd have to also probably see if the you know police station might be available, something like that. The village district should be available if you needed it. Okay. All right, so we plan on Thursday, June 7th at 7 p.m. And what I would like to do at that point is to take the sections as BHB had broken it down and start with the, the beach area and then just go on and see if there's anything there that we want to make sure that we get the language in. Why not, why not in the agenda we, we designate so we can work on this section, that section, this section, that section. So, we, you know, rather than, you know, we talk South Beach, North Beach, Middle yeah. Beach, yeah. you know, if we could, okay. if we break it up into maybe five sections or something like that. Mm -hmm. So at least if, if on the agenda we can, we, we're, talk, we're talking to that subject. Okay. Why not? Sounds good to me. We'll put that on the agenda that way and get the agenda out early. Anything else? But I'll take a motion with some sort. Okay. I'll make a motion. We adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Channel 22, and thank you all for being here this evening. We appreciate it very much. Oh, nice.